You know, I said before I left on my vacation a week ago that there might not be a country left to make this show for when I got back. I mean, guys, I was just joking. Can we stop this? We learned from Democrats that the best way to help black communities is apparently to burn them to the ground, which I kind of thought was like what the KKK did. Of course, the world learned about the KKK itself, thanks to the Democrats as well, so I guess it fits. I really appreciated the luxury of being on vacation in the middle of all this craziness. It kind of gives you a chance to marinate a little bit on what is a very odd collection of serious issues. At least you have the chance, you know, to avoid looking like this lady. What if in the middle of the night my home is broken into? Who do I call? Yes, I mean, I, I hear that loud and clear from a lot of my neighbors. And I know, and, and myself too, and I know that that comes from a place of privilege. Ah, yes. Check your privilege, person who doesn't want to be murdered in their homes in the middle of night. Ah, ha, ha. You just don't you feel privileged when someone breaks in? It was painful watching all these hot take artists kind of flail around trying to find the right virtue to signal. Most of them just rush to their gushing apologies on behalf of their races or whatever social media requires of you to be a good citizen this week. Yes, we all know racism equals bad. Are we still having this conversation? For a million reasons, racism equals bad. As you may be aware, this country has had a little bit of a problem with racism over the years. I can certainly understand why an African-American gentleman or gentle lady might have heightened awareness and fear of uh, police interactions that I might not. But, you know, me posting a black box on Instagram or apologizing for white people, most of which are long dead, does nothing to cure that. I don't represent white people. I represent myself. I am responsible for my own actions, not for the actions of some person who lived before I was born, who I happen to share the same skin tone with. I am not going to apologize for the stuff they did because I'm not them. For all our national conversations on race that we have every couple of months, this is one of the zillion problems with racism that is rarely ever discussed. Fundamentally, racism is a collectivist pursuit. If you see people as individuals instead of representatives of groups, you don't have issues with racism. I loved what Eric July said on this program just as the story was first breaking. I've always said that racism without statism is nothing but a bad idea. And I'm one of the first ones, one of my most popular articles that I, that I self-published, you know, I was talking about the history of like black Amer Americas and I was like, if they un actually understood their history, then they would be libertarians. Mm. You consider slavery, Jim Crow, <laughs> uh, all the Supreme Court, Plessy versus Ferguson, Dred Scott v. Sanford, all, all of this. When you consider that that was state sanctioned, endorsed racism. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for Joe Blow to not like me because I'm black. Who cares? It's Joe Blow. <laughs> right. But when that hat guy has, let's say, a territorial monopoly on use of force, violence, and ultimate decision making, that's different. It hits different. It's more aggressive, and there's less that I can do uh, to combat it. So instead of people focusing on the actual that that, that statism that exists, they limit it to, to race, and that's why it's never a solution. It's really smart. So let's take a step back here from all the yelling and the screaming and the broken windows and the burned out buildings. Is the cause for these riots and protests legitimate? To answer that, we need to break this into two separate questions. First, is there an individual complaint? Was George Floyd wrongly killed? And the answer to that is yes. By all appearances, we can recognize what happened to the Floyd was horrific and wrong. One way we recognize this as a society is to charge four people with crimes, including murder. We can all kind of unite and say George Floyd, the individual, was wronged. But because our society doesn't seem to care about individuals, the scope of this story had to be changed, and Floyd had to be used as an example of an ongoing epidemic of racist violence against blacks by the police. Trevor Noah attempted to connect his nine brain cells with dental floss and spit out this pseudo-emotional analysis, which I am convinced, by the way, he actually thinks is a good point. Think about that, that, that unease that you felt watching that target being looted. Try to imagine 
how it must feel for black Americans when they watch themselves being looted every single day. Because that's fundamentally what's happening in America. Police in America are looting black bodies. One of the strands of dental floss did break in the middle of that, we should point out. Police are looting black bodies. Wow, I mean, it is so powerful. But is it true? Largely, no. There is no systemic problem with police officers murdering African Americans. I know that's really hard to hear, but follow me here for a second. There is no ongoing genocide of African Americans by cops. The thing you're saying is a thing is not a thing. It surely was a thing at some point in the past, but it's not really a thing anymore. First of all, more white people are killed by cops than black people in America. I know that's very shocking for everyone to hear, but it's true. According to the Washington Post, about twice as many whites have been killed since 2015 than blacks. Their database focuses on shooting, so it's not particular to the case of George Floyd, but these trends are consistent throughout various studies. In Minnesota, it's more like four times as many whites get killed by police than blacks. And when you look at unarmed suspects killed, it's five to one. And I mean that literally, five whites were killed and one African-American was killed over five years. Now, is that a problem? Yes, particularly in the much smaller subset of these deaths where the killings were not justified. I'm just lumping in everything, including a ton of cases where the suspect was shot dead for nothing more than the minor misstep of shooting their gun at the cop while on video. So no, this is not looting bodies or genocide. What the media and the Black Lives Matter protesters will then fall back on is the rate. Yes, more whites are killed by cops, but there are a lot more white people. Blacks are killed at a higher rate than whites. First of all, I'd like to point out that when you were talking about a genocide, you don't need to fall back on the rate. When you're talking about World War II, you don't have to say, well, yes, Hitler put more Aryans in the gas chambers in total numbers, but the rate for Jews was higher. You don't need to make those arguments in a genocide. It's not a genocide. But even if we ignore the ridiculous hyperbole, you can, you know, if you strictly compare the fatal shootings by officers to the population, there is an elevated trend, a little bit of an elevated rate among blacks. They make up about 13% of the population and account for about 24% of the deaths. That's not good. But it's a number that is considerably lower than what would be expected statistically when it comes to interactions with the police, which is why how this should be thought of. 24% of the total deaths looks a lot less like a genocide when you consider that African Americans make up 53% of the known homicide offenders in the United States, according to government data from 2018. Known murderers tend to have nasty interactions with police, which leads to police shooting them a lot more often. In fact, a cop is 18 and a half times as likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male is to be killed by a police officer. Yet we're talking about defunding the police? And even when aggression is used by officers, Racist trends are invisible in the data. Study after study after study shows the same thing. From the Wall Street Journal, the latest in a series of studies undercutting the claim of systemic police violence was published in August 2019 in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. I'm quoting. The researchers found that the more frequently officers encounter violent suspects from any given racial group, the greater the chance that a member of that group will be fatally shot by the police officer. There is, quote, no significant, uh, no significant evidence of anti-black disparity in the likelihood of being fatally shot by police, they concluded. I should add, a follow-up showed the trend extended to non-fatal shootings as well. A 2015 Justice Department analysis of the Philadelphia Police Department found that white police officers were less likely, less likely than black or Hispanic officers to shoot unarmed black suspects. You might notice that was a Justice Department finding during the presidency of one Barack Obama. And research by Harvard economist Laurel and G. Fryer Jr. also found no evidence of racial discrimination in the shootings, to the, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, killings by officers, again, including the majority of them that were justified, make up only about 
0.1% of the total amount of African Americans who were killed. We are having marches about the 0.1% when the 99.9% .9 barely gets addressed. And what does the data show in the rest of the cases? Perhaps we will find our racial genocide there? Hmm? No, I'm sorry. African Americans make up 13% of the population and are responsible for about 16% of the murders of white people in America. Basically about even with their population percentage. But the same cannot be said for whites murdering blacks. If there was some sort of massive amount of racist violence in this country, you'd expect the white percentage to be really high, right? Well, despite being more than 70% of the population, whites are only responsible for about 8% of murders of African Americans. 8%. 72% of the population committing 8% of the murders. That is not a racial genocide, or at least not a good one. People obviously don't know how to do that if they're trying to do it that way. A full 89% of murders of African Americans are committed by African Americans. 89%. Those numbers do not include the 85 people shot and 24 people killed in Chicago just this past weekend. Nor do they include the roughly 17 people killed in the protests and riots to supposedly honor the one man named George Floyd, who was one man killed by one police officer. Or maybe four. 17 deaths to honor one man. Is that a good ratio? So far, that's it. This is the justice George Floyd deserved? Obviously, none of this should shine a negative light on people exercising the rights given to them in the First Amendment. Protesting peacefully is a cornerstone of our republic. You don't have to agree with every element of the points being made to recognize that. And importantly, none of this does any work to confirm some David Duke fever dream. Black people are not inherently more violent than white people or whatever new convoluted race theory is bouncing around 8chan these days. A good, part of this ex a good part of this is explained easily. It's pretty easy to understand. People tend to live near people who are similar to them. People tend to kill people who live near them. About seven in 10 blacks live in cities. About eight in 10 whites do not. Cities are more violent uh, than, than the rural areas. It's true, and blacks more frequently live in cities. This is not a good argument to adopt the collectivist idea of racism. And it certainly is not a reason to deconstruct the police and leave the people most likely to become the victims of murder without the only people left to protect them. Most of these cities have already taken away these citizens' rights to own a gun to protect themselves, and now the left wants to take away the police? Who are the racists here again? I'm losing track. Anger over the murder of another citizen is a just cause, regardless of skin color. But at some point, we need to recognize that we live in a country of 330 million people. The fact that you could tick off a few names featured in prominent news stories is not evidence of a genocide. Somewhere between 10 and 30 unarmed blacks are killed by police each year. Too many. We want it to be zero. Many of them, though, end up wind, uh, being obviously justified in the aftermath, including a guy who was once in a shootout with police, then told police he had a gun and was going to shoot them. He didn't actually have a gun, so it counts as an unarmed death. But it's almost impossible to stop something that happens less than 20 or 30 times a year in a country this size. Almost 700 people die from falling off a bed every year. 144 people die of constipation every year, which sounds like a terrible way to go. And over 60 people die from a nasty interaction with a lawnmower. Racism is a serious issue. Anytime someone is murdered, regardless of the reason, that's of course serious as well. But taking a problem that we've made so much progress on to the point of it almost completely disappearing and dismantling police departments on the back of a lie? That's not something that any of us should accept.